is all still pretty new to me. Um, so what I have is my relatively limited experience with publishing and my life experiences for my 28 years on this planet. Um, and so just as I share those stories and insights from my various experiences with people who contact me, I thought I would share that stuff with you guys today. So um, you guys are lucky though, because I have visuals. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Is this gonna work? So I start off, you know, I'll usually start off doing little thumbnail sketches, but we're gonna start at this point here, a couch. And as I said, I use Photoshop a lot. So I do different sketches individually, and then I'll scan them and piece them together in Photoshop. And that allows me a lot of freedom with the placement of things. I'm not moving things around too much here. The, their motion is pretty limited because of the couch. But in other illustrations, you know, I can, maybe I want chowder on the right-hand corner, or maybe I want him on the left-hand corner, and I don't have to make that decision until I get everything scanned into Photoshop. And then I can piece it all together, and, and I, it really allows me so much freedom with the compositional stage that um, I feel like I can make, ex make it look exactly the way that I want to. So that's always nice. Add a little, little digital touch-ups here and there. And then I move on to the color study, which we've talked about. This is exciting, preparing the painting surface. You gotta cut the boards, and now this is a little hard to see, but um, this is actually a really important stage of my process because this is when I'm applying gesso to the surface of the illustration board. Gesso is just like a primer, so I'll apply it with really an old, dirty brush, and it'll, there'll be all these thick brush strokes in it, which will harden, and then that's the surface that I paint on. And so with my illustrations, I have a lot of texture, and the way I achieve that is because of this stage right here. Um, I will paint lots of flat color and all these different details, excuse me, all these different details in the painting, and then at some point I'll start dry brushing, and when I dry brush with, I use acrylic paint, by the way, and when I dry brush, that's when I get all this texture to come out, and that's when the paintings really come alive. So, although this looks very simple, it's the key part. So then I'll print out that sketch that I pieced together in Photoshop. I wish it would be nice if I could make a perfect sketch on a piece of paper with a pencil and then have this nice little piece of artwork I could hang up somewhere, but that's all right. That's what the paintings are for. So then I'll just do an old fashioned graphite transfer onto the board and I've created this crude little device here to keep everything registered. Um, so that as I'm painting, if I need to sort of retrace one of the lines here or there, I can just put the painting back in place and retrace it and it'll be right perfectly registered. So, so then I've transferred the sketch and I begin painting. Now with acrylic, the rule with acrylic is you have to paint back to front. Every, you know, I don't really use oil or watercolor, but I, I imagine they have their own special, special process. But for acrylic, you really want to start whatever is furthest in the scene and work your way forward so you can overlap. And so I start with a couch. And when I do these spot illustrations on a white background, it allows me a lot of freedom to be messy, and then I can clean it up with the white as I go. So there's the shadows from the people, and there's Bernie. Um, I, that was a big jump, but I'll show you here. So here's Madge. So her clothes are on top of her, right? So her skin is behind the clothes. So I'll paint the, the skin tones in first, and then on top of that, whoops, I will paint her clothing and, and the other details. And then I get to chowder. So then I just have to clean it up a little bit and I'm all done. <laughs> 